Hey everyone, today we're diving into the world of AI and learning how to integrate Google's powerful Gemini model into your Java applications. You've probably used Gemini already. It's a tool that's used for tasks like text generation, translation, coding, image generation, and much more. You can chat with it for free on the public app, but today we'll go beyond that and see how to call Gemini using its API in a Java application. We'll cover everything step by step from setting up your Google Cloud project to writing the Java code itself. And we'll also go through some of the options and settings that you can choose to optimize the model for your use case. So the first thing you'll need to do is to create a Google Cloud project. If you don't have one already, you can head over to console.cloud.google.com and create one. Once you've created a project, make sure to enable billing. And finally, to use Gemini, you'll have to enable the Vertex AI API for your project. You can just click on this button, which should enable all the required APIs automatically. We'll also be using the gcloud CLI tool, so make sure you have that installed. I've added links for all of these steps in the description. Once you set up your Google Cloud project, you can navigate to the Vertex AI section and go to the Freeform page. Here you can test out different prompts and see how Gemini responds. Let's say we want to generate creative stories. We can type in a prompt like this. Write a short story about a robot who learns to love the smell of freshly baked bread. Make sure it's funny and heartwarming. Okay, so this prompt seems good enough. Let's see how it works. We can click submit here and generate the response. At this time, it's good to play around with different prompts and model settings to see what kind of responses you get. For our prompt, let's generate the response a few more times just to get an idea of what the responses look like. We can also adjust the model settings like temperature, max tokens, and model type to get different types of responses. Once we're happy with the prompt and response, we can move on to adding the code to our Java application. So the easiest way to do this is to click on the Get Code button here. This will give us instructions on how to call the Gemini API from our Java application. Now let's look at our code. We'll use a standard Maven project for this example. If you want to see the full working code, I've added a link to the GitHub repo in the description as well. First, we'll need to add the necessary dependencies to the pom.xml file. You can find these dependencies on the Vertex instructions page. We'll need to copy and paste them into our pom.xml dependencies. Next, we'll have to copy the Java code itself. Within the project, we have an app class and a main function inside it. We can copy and paste the code here. We'll also copy the imports. Let's go through the code now, just so that we understand what's happening. Okay, so here we create a Vertex AI instance where we mention our project name and region. We create the generation config, which contains the settings that we chose on the UI. This includes settings like the max output tokens, temperature, and top P. The safety settings here basically specify what the model is not allowed to generate. Here you can specify what you would like the Gemini API to block. And you can set different thresholds for different categories like hate speech, dangerous content, and others. For now, let's just go with the default settings that have been given to us. Next, we declare our generative AI model. So here we can choose the model name. In this case, it's Gemini 1.5 Flash. And then we set the Vertex AI instance along with the generation config and safety settings that we declared earlier. Finally, we can see our prompt over here, which we use to generate the final response. So by default, the code gives us the response in the form of a stream. This means that the response will be generated bit by bit, which we will get as live chunks. So before you run this application, you'll have to authenticate your Google Cloud accounts and set up your credentials. You can do this by running this command using the gcloud command line tools. This should set up your default application credentials, and you should then be able to run the code for the project that you created. We can then use the maven exec command to run our code. If you run this, you should see the live response from the Gemini model. Because it's generated as a stream, the response will be broken down into multiple parts, and each part will have a safety rating and the partial text that has been generated by the model. If you don't need a live response chunk by chunk, and you're okay with waiting for the entire response to come in before processing it, 
You can use the generate content method instead of the generate content stream method. The return value from this method will wait until the entire response is generated before returning. So now we can see that if we run this code, the entire response is printed out at once. Now let's talk about the grounding feature in Vertex. So grounding is a way to provide context to the model by giving it a source of information that it should consider when generating a response. This can help the model generate more relevant responses based on the context that is provided. So you can think of it like this. By default, the model only has the knowledge that it's trained on, but it doesn't know about any new information that has taken place after its training is over. This is the problem that grounding tries to solve. In the case of Vertex and Gemini, you can opt to provide grounding information via Google search. So what happens here is, in the background, this will use the Google search API to fetch relevant information based on the prompt you provide. This information is then provided as additional context to the model while it's generating its response. This can be incredibly useful if you want your response to contain live and up-to-date information. So let's see how this works with an example. Here our prompt is asking which sports are included in the Summer Olympics. Right now grounding is turned off. So if we generate a response here, we'll get a generic response of sports that are generally included in the Summer Olympic Games. Now let's turn grounding on and generate the response again. Okay, so now we can see that the model has included information about the 2024 Paris Olympics, which is the most recent Summer Olympics at the time of this recording. The reason we didn't get this kind of information with grounding turned off is because at the time of this recording, the model itself probably hadn't been trained on information related to the latest Olympics. When we turned on grounding, the Vertex API looked at our prompt fetched the latest information from Google search in the background and provided it as additional information to generate the final response. This is why it includes information that may not have been present when training the model itself. Now this may seem great, but please note that adding grounding can increase the overall cost and response time. And you don't need to use grounding for all prompts. You only need to use it for those that require factual and up-to-date information. For example, if you want to generate a fictional story, like in our previous example, or if you only want to change the tone or presentation of some input text, you don't really need to use grounding. So now whenever you change any of these settings, the code in the get code section will update to include them. For example, when I've enabled grounding here, we can see that the code has now added grounding as well. So you can copy, paste and run this in the same way as before. So that about wraps it up for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.